and welcome to the Vassal Girl Speaks. Today is Monday, August 20th, and this is episode 26. Yes, it definitely is. Hello. Oh, and maybe Beth also known as the Butt Squirrel. If you'd like to contact me, unravel the Emperor or Plurk or and and slash or, feel free to do so. Love to hear from you. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Wah! Sorry. I just found out my husband is home this week on vacation because he wanted to do some things around the house. Read. Oh, crud. <laughs> anyway, he had to recock our tub. And let me just say, I am a 13 year old boy, so there have been lots of jokes all day and all day yesterday. Anyway, he needs to recalk our tub. And um, we have, a, again, I will say it a million times, we have a really old house and our bathroom actually has a regular old window in it with a wood frame because it was made when there was just a tub in the bathroom because there was no shower. So anyway, so he thought he was going to like strip off the paint of the the window and repaint it because he's done that several times and then he was just going to recock around the, the tub has like one of those surrounds you know the plasticky surround thing that goes up on the walls so he they're gonna and he just found out like 20 minutes ago <laughs> that he has to take down all of that that big plastic thing and put in a new one so i'm a little bit like because he's a little bit like <laughs> so i'm sorry i'm a little scattered oh surprise Anyway, so that's the immediate what's going on. You'll hear him slumping around and going up and down stairs, and it's going to be fabulous. But anyway, because he's trying to find one online so that he knows where to go to get one. Cause I, and it's probably going to be in regular measurement because our house is old and weird. It's going to be a to-do. Anyway, that's what's happening. Um, so, pfft, hello. Welcome to you who have watched the show before. I appreciate it. Okay. I know it's very busy. It's summertime. Kids are going back to school. Things are going on. So thank you for spending your time. If you're a new viewer, thank you ever so much. Even more maybe because you have actually finally listened to some small voice in your head that said to watch and I appreciate it because Lord knows. Lord? Lord. Suddenly I'm Scottish. Uh, Lord knows that there are plenty of podcasts out there for you to love and enjoy. And so I do really appreciate your time and trying me out. So. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, ba, 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 ba. Well, one thing I totally forgot to tell you about last week. Story. Um, so my daughter started school. She's now been in school for two whole weeks. Uh, but last week, I forgot to tell you. I don't know how I forgot this epic thing. She totally lost her first tooth, too. So she had been in school for the full week. And then on that weekend, Sunday, she was all like, I think her tooth is wobbly. And I was like, well. It's about time, cause like just a few days earlier, I had looked a picture of her, like a picture of her, and thought to myself, her teeth look kind of crazy. Duh, new mom. Um, I mean, mom of only one child, first time experiencing these things. Um, her teeth look wonky, cause they're all small, cause they're her baby teeth, but her head is a giant size. That's why she looked crazy. Um, but anyway, I was like, huh, but, duh, that's nature. Um, so she's all like, our tooth feels wobbly. And it was like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm like, okay, that's cool. She's like, will it fall out today? I'm like, no, it's not going to, it's going to take like four or five days to fall out. She's all immediate gratification. So hi. Um, so, uh, I was like, stop touching your tooth. You can wiggle it with your tongue. That's what you're supposed to do. Don't put your germy, dirty hand up in there. And that's an open wound. I uh, if you get like septicemia of the gum and I have to explain that to somebody, it's not going to be cute. So don't. This is all, all day long. And I'm like, dude, it's, just give it time. It's cool. It's okay. Eat an apple if you really are pushing it. I see her later. I have to get it in your mouth. <laughs> I'm an evil mama. I, <laughs> she's wiggling, wiggling. About 5.30 at night, she's like, my tooth hurts. I'm like, because you've been messing with it all day long leave it alone my tooth hurts i'm like stop touching it so an hour later he's like oh my tooth fell out <laughs> okay a it took one day for the tooth to fall out so now we look wrong because we're like takes five days no her tooth fell out one day she's like a prodigal tooth loser so then so it falls out and then of course the tooth fairy has an unexpected visit. You know, usually you get to send the tooth fairy a memo like, hey, heads up, tooth fairy, something might be happening. The tooth fairy can plan and this will see what's an appropriate thing to leave under a pillow. Tooth fairy got no warning. Right? I don't know who's watching this, but you, you know what I'm saying. Code. 
So anyway. <laughs> but she lost her first tooth. And this morning she's like, I think this other tooth is wobbly. I'm like, stop touching me. <laughs> she's got no teeth in her head. But that's okay. The other one is actually already, you can already see it coming through. So evidently it just was like, get out. So her new teeth are ready to come into the world, make their appearance and get cavities. Yay. Um, let's see. So that was one thing. Okay. Okay, another thing. Uh, today is August 20th. Just a reminder. It's not the way I mentioned it. Um, the locale, Cal, is going on um, starting September 1st. So any project you would like to make in a wool produced as near to you as is humanly possible uh, within your means and whatnots. Uh, so that will run September 1st through October 14th. Any project you would like, la 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 la. I think I just said that, sorry. Um, and then we will, yes. September 1st through October 14th. So cool. It's exciting. So even if you're not going to participate, as you're clearly a humbug, just saying, then you should go over to the boards and read the locale thread because it's got lots of great information about that. You might find something that's local to you that you had no idea was out there because there's lots of everywhere on the nation's map, on the world map, on the globe, all over the place. There's little pins. Man, if I was so clever and could make that happen. I totally would, but I'm not. So sorry. Ravelry does not. Ravelry totally has a Venn diagram feature. Did you know that? What? You could totally make Venn diagrams and Ravelry of groups of probably of other things too that I don't know about, but of groups even. You can see like your overlap with other groups. How cool is that? Thank you, Stocking Night Zombies. I didn't know that happened. Okay. But anyway, so I don't think Ravelry has a pin on the map for these locations of these things app. But if they do, let me know, because I will probably geek out on that and spend way too much time doing it. But as it is, just imagine in your little mind, in the window and power of your mind, little pins all over the club. It's so exciting. Anyway, so that is happening soon. Let's see what else is there to say. Um, oh, let's say thank you. What? I say thank you. What? Yes, I do. I like to say thank you in particular to Diane, who donated her real, actual, hard-earned money in the world to the show. Yeah, her. Um, and then, of course, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. And then thank all of you for uh, participating in the boards. Much appreciated. Thank all of you for leaving iTunes reviews. Oh my gosh, so many things I have. Not even joking. So, true. so that's totally it. Um, on to the knitting. Oh, wait, one more thing. So the husband is going to be home all week, so he's doing a project sees, as I mentioned a moment ago. So also yesterday we went to Akio and bought some things for the project sees. Let me just discuss. I know everybody has an Ikea joke. Like every, like I get it. It, it is kind of crazy. It is a surreal experience. If you've never been there, it's not so. If you have been there, like I know everybody has this exact same experience when they go. But my brain jellified totally jellified now we do a certain things that we were planning on getting like we needed a dresser for our child and a bookshelf for our child because she has way too many books she's like one of those little tiny bookshelves she's way too many books and they're always on the floor and it's a chaotic mess <sighs> so we need a bookshelf for the child and we need a dresser because right now she just that's what you get a mom it worked really well. It was fine. We had like this old weird wonky bookshelf that was not really a bookshelf, but was something else that we found somewhere a long time ago and repurposed into a bookshelf. And then it got repurposed into a dresser by putting little plastic bits in it. Whatever. It worked fine for the first five years of her life. Now her clothes are getting a little too big to all fit in there and it looks crazy sauce basically. So we were looking for a dresser for her. Well, evidently everybody else in the free world was at Ikea too because they were out of everything. <laughs> Duh, it's back to school time. Well, not back to, school, back to college time. So people are outfitting their cheapo apartments when they're 18, and that's what we can afford to. Whatever, we won't get into that. <laughs> but they were out of, like, everything. Three of the things we needed. Come on. So, but we did get the bookshelf, so yay. So yesterday I got to spend all day putting together bookshelves, which is so exciting. I love it. I mean, after we had already gone to Ikea, so I was a little tired, but that's okay. So anyway, but anyway, but my husband and my child both were just like, by the end of it, and I was too. It was not, it was crazy. It was a crazy sauce. So anyway, that's a small story. That didn't even really count as a story. That really had no point, middle, beginning, or end. Sorry. 
I feel like I should mention that. But anyway, if you need bookshelves, they're the only place to get bookshelves if you're not a rich Joe or pants. Um, if you are, please go to a local artisan. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, can I just discuss how much I love putting together Ikea furniture? People complain about it all the time. Those people are crazy. Ikea furniture is magic to put together. I love it. You get the diagram. It has no words, which is awesome. I mean, people, <laughs> I can read. But of course, they're putting their things out there for like 28 different countries. So 28 different languages on a piece of instructions makes it into a book, which is too much for me to handle. So it's all just picturey diagrams. And it's like being in shop in the eighth grade when you got to do the technical drawings, which was my favorite thing in the world. I love it. I love drawing things to scale. So exciting. Anyway, so I was so high. I was all putting my thing. My little kiddo's helping me because she's all geeky too. So she's putting in the little, by the. <laughs> How much did you love on PBS when you were a kid? There was that Woodwright dude who put together everything using like dovetail joints and biscuits and jigs. And I love his face. Actually, I think that guy is even more hardcore, but all of the woodworkers on PBS when I was a kid, I was in love with and wanted to marry. Also Mr. T. I don't know how that worked, but whatever. But they were all with their biscuit joints and their dovetail. I love that crap. Love it. Anyway. Um, so it makes me feel all hearkened back to that, even though it's completely not the same thing. <laughs> Having the people in Ikea world make your little thingies just, and you just have to pop them together. Whee! And then there's these weird fasteners that also hook into screw. It's, oh, I love it. Anyway, so people complain about it, just silly people. It's amazing. You get this box and it's just a box. And then 40 minutes later, it's shelves. It's awesome. So anyway, I get all geeked out about that. I love diagrams. I love, I just said I love Venn diagrams. This was not planned. I love diagrams. My kid had that crazy marble maze thing for Christmas, which was like bonkers, by the way. It really did have like a 40 page instruction book. But I loved it putting it together so much with her because I was just astounded by how they broke it down into like bite-sized pieces and it all fit together. I really should have been an engineer. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, so I love putting stuff together. I should probably stop talking about it right now, but it's awesome. And my kid helped, which was awesome. She was like, can I hammer things? I'm like, okay. So she got to hammer in the, the back of the bookshelves. It's like this laminate thing that's basically, it's not paper, but I mean, let's face it. Anyway, she got to hammer in the finishing nails. To get, she was very excited about that. And she got to put in all the little wooden doohickeys that stick the things together. Oh, it's awesome. Anyway. Knitting! Okay, so if you don't know what's going on, it's just my cow and a thousand other cows, by the way. Love the cows. Crazy. Um, but Mel and Ski Nuts from Single Handed Nets is telling her because talking about cow and I might have won! And I am the podcaster O, the undecided party. Yay. So anyway, so this week's challenge, which I didn't even know there was going to be. How fun is that? There's going to be mini challenges. This week's mini challenge was mini socks. So you, but only one of socks, only one of the two. And you can't be in love with the sock that you keep so that you, you're going to have to give it away or something's going to happen to it. I don't think you're going to light it in like a sacrificial fire or anything, but it's going to go away. So you can't keep it because I was all like, first I heard it. I was like, Oh my God, I just got to nick some of my kids some socks. And then no, 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 no. So somebody cleverly put out that they were going to make ornament socks. Perfect idea. Itty bitty. If we get to keep them, yay. If we get to give them away. Okay. That's fine. So I made two. It's from the party, the party. It's, it's from the party. It's totally a party. It's so fun. You get to knit a sock in like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. It's awesome. It's awesome. Anyway, it's the tiny sock ornament by the Everwhelming Liz. It's on her blog. It's on Ravelry. Find it, yeah. Um, so this is the first one. This is out of hand spun. How cute is that? You can knit them cuffed down. I may have made my toe a little pointier than necessary so that I didn't have to kitchener it. 
so lazy. Um, <laughs> really, Kitcheneringing like six stitches or four stitches. Let's just run the thing through. Put it up. Um, so there's that one mm, out of hand spun, and then I also made this one, which is out of Shetland Supreme, which is now the pattern is technically fingering or yeah fingering weight. This is whatever I have. No, this is the worst. This is not a single strand. This is a braided strand. This is like I don't know worsted ish and this is technically sportish but oh they were both knit on this oh so this can be a lesson in gauge well so that it's not very vis visually easy to understand um can you see that there yeah you can see that that's bigger so these are both knit uh same pattern of course and they were both knit on the same size needles which by the way i wish i liked double point knitting i wish i liked to knit socks on the double points because I like the theory of it, but my, I always get a ridge. I mean, I mean a ladder. I always get a ladder. I know that there's a thousand ways not to get the ladder. I've tried all of them. I get the stinking ladder every time. So I'm a avid magic looper. Um, but I, before I became an av magic, an avid magic looper, I had a crazy moment where I spent a lot of money on some double points. I, you know, sometimes you just have days where you're crazy basically. Um, so these are the blue, I think they're the blue. No, they're not lan moon lan lantern moon. Oh my gosh. I totally had it in my brain for a minute. You're all yelling at me. Anyway, these are the super fancy needles that come in that super, super fancy little box thing. And they're made out of super fancy, super hard wood, and they are so awesome. Awesome. Now I'm kind of a needle core and I will knit with just about anything that's not terribly offensive. Um, so I don't, I'm not like, oh, I must only knit with these. I'm whatever. I like some more than others, but I've rarely been like, no, <sighs> but I will avidly say that these are magic. Um, these are size twos. Oh, again, I knit socks in a zero. Oh, that was a long time ago. A dumb, but really these were like something like $24. Anyway, <laughs> so these both these little doohickeys though were knit on these because again ladders don't matter when it's ten times Yay! Um, and these these needles are supremely awesome. They're so pointy and so rigid. They're awesome. So there's my two finished objects. You might be like, oh wait, I totally have a finished object that's not here. Magical, mystical finished object. I finished that sweater vest that I made and it worked out perfect. I was a little concerned because the person it was made for has some um, smaller, it's some fella. He has the typical slightly rotund uh, fellow figure in that his hips and waist are very little, but he has a, a belly and then it goes a little bit smaller shoulder. So it, but it worked, it fit him perfectly. I was so excited because I actually made the waist ribbing itty bitty. I mean, it could fit over me, but it was tight and he, his biggest belly measurement is about my biggest bust measurement. So I figured out eh, whatever. So it did fit over me. Um, but it was very snug, but perfect. Just whoop, right around his hips so that it wouldn't be like, cause that's not, a, that's not a good look. The, the sweater or the vest or whatever on a fellow with a big belly, then it hangs. And then there's like this, so it hangs out here. And then there's like this space. And then the person that's not a good look. It's not a good look for a lady either. Um, so, uh, so that worked out really well. I just made it so narrow in the hip. I increased like 10 to 12% when I got out of the ribbing. And then I actually did a little extra increases just in the front. So not in the back of the piece, but just in the front of the piece again to accommodate a little extra girth in the tummy area. And then I went way back up and almost went like two sizes smaller for the shoulders. Worked out perfectly. Yay me. Um, I hope because it looked perfect, but he might be like, I don't like how this fits. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I say it fits, it fits. So that was the finished topic number three, which you can't see, but it, just imagine it in your head. Alpaca, sort of best, plain. Um, yes. Oh, I have a spinning finished object. Uh, the beautiful Kate sent me a loop bat, which was called Blaze. It was 4.6 ounces of Coriodel Merino and nylon and sparkles and it's done. I, I wish I could 
I, when I skein mine up, the colors never stay together. All super pretty, like the other podcasters who are much more clever than I am. But whatever, I'm still pleased with it. It's, it's super fall tasmic. You can't really. Right, 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 there you go. There's like this beautiful mustard, and then there's this crazy burgundy, and they are next to each other, and it's gonna be beautiful knit because when I was spinning it, I was like, oh my gosh, that was genius. Um, that mustard and that eggplanty color next to each other. Awesome. Um, and then the crazy orange. So this one's called Blaze. And it is very blazy. And I am enjoying it. I enjoyed making it, of course, because it's just like fun to spin because there is zero resistance. It's really, it's like the fanciest thing ever to spin. Not even kidding you. It's, it, every time. This is, this is in no way a detrimental comment. This is just a comment of how amazing it is. Every time I spin it, I'm like, this is really not wool. <laughs> this is not an organic product that came off of some animal. This has to be engineered somewhere because it's far too consistent and nice. Again, not to imply that because I love spinning roving. I don't mean that as a bad thing at all towards roving or dyed top or anything like that. But it's like a totally different beast altogether. It's like a fancy beast. There's tutus and tiaras and has a little pink. It's amazing. Anyway, but you all know that, of course. Um, while I'm talking about spinning, might as well talk about here's some green stuff. I should do the kitty cat, which <laughs> some of you made comments about that I was mauling her. It's stuffed animal, just practice for her future. <laughs> but I was really strangling her. <laughs> but you have to, you have to work with it. Anyway, so this is some, Cor uh, no, this is not Coriadale. This is some uh, Rambouillet. And then, which I'm making a toy for the, there's a boy, they're sister and brother, and they, blended family, sister and brother that are like two weeks apart. So I got her and then I'm getting the puzzles or something silly. So then this is, I'm trying to do worsted weight. And I'm going to make him, oh, I'm going to make him a weeb, which I'm very excited about. So, because he loves green. Loves it. That's his color, green. And it's very green. So anyway, I think it's going to be super cute. So excited about it. So then, I know, right? Now I'm going to work some progress. You've seen this before, but not finished it. Well, it's not finished it. I know. It's got waist yarn in it for the heel. Whatever. gonna make this my big ho show my ho expo <gasps> oh my god ho expo it's it's my ho expo people that's too good not to be used immediately whether it's accurate or not I'm calling it my ho expo i'm ready to go anyway <laughs> technically those are kind of are hoes then this is kind of a ho i know the he i know the heel is not done but the heel is nothing it doesn't even count as a thing so these are my simple Skype socks, simple ribbed Skype, whatever, you know what it is. This is the Red Heart, Heart and Soul, something like that. Sockies, I could be completely wrong. <laughs> Rock candy colorway. And then I have this much of the toe. So that's, uh, that's like a heel's worth right there. Just imagine that, oh. So anyway, I'm totally pleased with that. Um, I did look at the reviews for this sock yarn and people were kind of angry about it. But the thing they seem to complain about most is that it bagged. And it is, a, I would definitely consider it a light fingering. It's a, a muy scanale fingering. That's not a word. <laughs> it's a muy scanale fingering weight. Um, but I'm hoping that the ribbing, which it was unintentional, just a happy coincidence, will keep it from being too baggy. I'm sure that most people probably did not knit it at the, a tight enough gauge because usually that's what bagging means. It can be the yarn. I mean, it can be the fiber, but this is just like super wash and, and nylon. So I, it is a higher content than nylon. I think it's like 30%. So it's possible. Um, so, but I'm hoping that those people just knit it too loosely because I'm guessing that might be what it was. I'm just, you know, that's all I see is like 25% nylon. So I not calling those people out, but I think they're wrong. Take all reviews written online with a grain of salt. Grain of salt. And, and like that, I got like for $6. It's 
the end of the world. It doesn't work. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to more hoes. Pow. Now, this is a technical hoe. Although you'd be like, that doesn't even count. It's the shortest ankling ever. Whatever. Lollipop yarns. Super girly girl. Super washing socky stripey goodness. Oh, afterthought heel, of course. Now, a lot of people don't like the afterthought feel heel and just, I mean, they like doing it, but they don't like how it fits. Fits my foot fabulously. <laughs> Again, I've discussed I have a very elephantine foot, evidently. Very square heel. So this very square perfect. <laughs> I'm going to do everything as an afterthought heel for the rest of my life, I think. I'm not even going to be tricked into doing any kind of gusseting. No, don't trick me. Alpha Olive. I'll forget. Oh, it's a baby hoe! I do not condone baby hoeing at all. Baby hoe. No, it's obviously very cute. No, it's not. Um, But no heel. Whatever. Again, I discuss this all again. Oh, expo. Um, so, so this is the thing I was trying. The reason this one has a very short Normally, I like a shorter cuff on a sock. This is a little micro-y. But I really got this one done and thought, maybe I can actually get two pairs of socks out of this for my giant feet and my child's giant for a child feet. We'll see. Really, she's like a U.S. size three in the youths. It's like a five in women's. Oh my gosh, she's giant. Anyway, and I have this much on. I think I can totally do it. Although she might get white heels on her socks. If I'd have thought about it, I would have heels and toes and white never darling. But I didn't think about it ahead of time. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh, 26 minutes? What am I? I haven't even said anything. <gasps> okay. Final whip. Final whip. No more hoes. Um... So my kiddo is totally uniformy kiddo, um, and they have to wear either red, navy, or white sweaters, and they can't have hoods. I'm not good at shopping. <laughs> I don't like to shop. Like, if I can't find it online at one of three vendors, it's probably not going to get purchased. They didn't have it at Target, and if they don't have it at oldnavy.com, sorry, it doesn't exist to me. <laughs> So they did have a blue cable sweater that did not have a hood on it at Old Navy, but whatever. I'm making her a sweater. So um, Nipix, totally. They had this comfy, no, I'm sorry, Stroll Sport, which is the super wash, 75% in the wool, 25% nylon, sport weight, 137 yards and 50 grams. This is the scarlet colorway. They totally randomly had this. It's a it's a colorway that's going away. That's kind of hard to say. Anyway, it's it's a discontinued colorway. They're not dying it anymore. They still have some in stock. They had this on sale for two sixty nine a ball, and I figured that it would take six balls to make my kid a sweater. Fifteen dollars sweater, yo! So I'm I, I don't actually knit my chil my children. I have a child. I don't knit my child that much stuff because she grows so fast that it's ridiculous. And quite frankly, she's a mess. Everything is disgusting. <laughs> no, she, but she is messy. Like, she's constantly got, like, schmear on her. She will have not eaten anything for six days, and there will be food on her face. I don't know how it happens, but it does. Um, so I don't know. I've never really knit her. I mean, I've knit her sweaters, but not, like, with my whole heart. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that $15, I will make that investment of time and money. But I, $40, maybe not. <laughs> so yay, Nitpick said this on Super Duper Steel. Um, so two, but now it's up to $4.69 again. Sorry, kids. But um, so this is her sweater so far. Yay! I just started it on, I ordered the yarn. Oh, just FYI, in terms of their shipping speed. I ordered their yarn on Friday. And it came on Tuesday. Yes. Um, now they are they ship out of Ohio, and I am in Indiana, so we're neighbors. But still, that's pretty quick. Um, so this is not a pattern. This is I'm just using um, Ann Bud's handy dandy book of sweater patterns as a reference, um, and then just measuring another sweat. You know what I mean? Working it. And the, but I decided to do this because it's kind of cutesy. It's that little X's and O's, hugs and kisses on your sweater. Mommy loves me. So. 
Um, I have just split for the armholes this morning. So I just have a wee bit. So, but, oh, you'll also notice that the My Hope shawl is not making an appearance today. It's because I haven't worked on it at all. Sorry, shawls. Um, oh, it's so exciting. So I've been totally trying to get this little sweater done because um, winter is coming. Um, but when I took the sweater vest to deliver it, um, there were other people there and they ordered a commission, two commission sweaters. So yay. I know people are like, ooh, commission. No, if I could do any work from home and earn dollars, I'm excited. Um, it's not like I'll be earning lots of dollars, <laughs> but grocery dollars. Yay. So, um, I'm trying to get that done. I just ordered the yarn from Beaver Slide. Um, I just ordered the yarn from Beaver Slide uh, this weekend, so it'll probably get here at the end of the week. So I'm trying to get that finished before I actually have the the yarn for those sweaters in hand, because once it's in hand, I really do need to just... So you'll be seeing a lot of those sweaters in a couple weeks, sorry. Um, I will still try to do my sock the boat knitting longing, uh, but it will be a lot of those sweaters. So I do apologize, it might be a little repetitive for you for a while, but just... Stick with me. I'll try to invent other clever things to talk about um, while I'm showing you the exact same things. Because <laughs> it's two sweaters knit in the same yarn, same pattern, one for a man, one for a woman. Anyway, but anyway, I totally hope you have a good week. And I will see you again next time. Bye. Or maybe still bye. <laughs>